is Leanne Goble reporting for AdobeAirstream.com. On July 9th, I attended the opening of You Are Here at Plus Gallery in Denver, Colorado, and had the opportunity to interview Canadian artist Brendan Tang. Okay, so all of the mango ormolu stuff is... I, I make all the vessels and uh, all the parts for it. I would probably say about 96% of it is ceramic. So, uh, and then there's all these other embellishments. So right. there's glass and there's metal, and those ones are, are fairly, fairly recognizable. But yeah, and it's funny because I do well. A lot for the ceramic people. A lot of people ask me if I use molds or whatever. But I do all of the building a very traditional way. So uh, I use the potter's wheel predominantly, predominantly. for a lot of this work, and then uh, slab building and all that sort of stuff. So really, kind of. Very rudimentary pinch pots. Yeah, I do it so all. So you do all the basic yeah. ceramic. And then what about your glazing techniques? Are, is it all glaze or do you use other yeah. elements as well? So what I do is uh, there's this technique called underglazing where you apply the color on there and then you put a clear gloss over top of it. So with the robotic parts, I use an airbrush and I do that sort of stuff. But with the blue and white parts, I do a lot of the hand painting. Hand painting. And it's been, it's been a lot of fun kind of building up that skill level and kind of figuring it out. I, mean, I don't know, I kind of geek out about those kinds of things. Yeah. I was saying to somebody earlier, I'm like, probably one of the few male artists that's got like a sketchbook littered with carnation drawings <laughs> and peonies drawings. Except, and I'm not a tattoo artist. Right. So it's just like, you're like, dude, okay. Really pretty flowers. Yeah, a lot of pretty flowers in here. I'm like, yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> What's the largest piece you've ever made? Uh, the largest work that I've out of the, in this series, uh, I made just recently a piece that's about, uh, about this, this long, this long. So, but um, I'm currently, actually, I took time out of a residency that I'm at uh, in, in Alberta. And I'm working on a much larger piece because they have bigger kilns there. Yeah. And so I'm taking advantage of that. Gas or electric? Electric. Okay. Wow, you're talking the inside lingo. And it's mostly because I'm really, I'm really, really inattentive about my color. And uh, there's a lot of beautiful things that go on in the atmosphere of fire, but uh, I'm not willing to let it go. Yeah, too much risk. Too much, too much risk. Low, low fire or high fire? Low fire. Low fire. So you get the color. I call, I call what I use ghetto porcelain. <laughs> Hopefully you can in that term, but yeah. It's a low fire clay body. And a lot of the reason is because if I were to take the work to a higher temperature, I feel, at least I think, it'll really tear itself apart. Right. Because there's different thicknesses of the clay. At that lower temperature, it's a lot, you can be a lot more liberal. So what drew you to ceramics versus any other medium? Pardon? What drew you to ceramics versus another medium? And, and as a fine artist, yeah. you know, it's not something that you normally find. Yeah, I think, it's like, I think part of it is, is being able to take something from here and create something in three dimensions. And so intuitively create it in three dimensions. Right. Like it's like you're, you know, it's like, um, you know, it's the most old school uh, rapid prototyping. It's like, well, it's like, not rapid, it's like slow ass oh, prototyping. Uh, but it, it, you know, I'm in there with my hands. There's something very visceral, very kinesthetic about this relationship with the material. I, I feel like if I talk about it too much, it gets really romantic. Mm-hmm. About me with the mud, moving around. Uh, but it, that's what it, that's what it, it's like me getting in there and like using my hands and pushing these things out. It's, it's something that is really kind of cool. And any influences? Who who would be? Uh, which artists, living or dead, are your oh, biggest influences? Oh, there's so many influences. Adrian Sachs is a big influence. Not a good thing. Uh, Adrian Sachs is a big. Uh, Grayson Perry is a big uh, artist that I. Uh, Takashi Murakami, Jeff Koons, uh, well, Damien Hurst, that whole crowd. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's a lot. And there's a lot of amazing ceramics that people that are doing so. That, that, so I think it's kind of 
runs the gamut. But then there's a lot of other things that really draw my attention, like, you know, sci bad science fiction <laughs> and Japanese robots and Transformers. Everything is kind of mashing up in there. It's like definitely I feel like I feel like I'm doing like what turntablists and, and uh, hip hop artists are doing with music, but doing it in surround.